Hello and welcome to Faith All. I'm sincerely grateful that you can join us today. I want to appreciate God for you, for you. Uh, because without you, there will be no us. I want to thank God that he has put it in your heart to seek him. The Bible says those who seek him will find him. I believe God that after now you would have grown in the revelation and knowledge of God. Because I have a word from God that will bless you, transform you. I'd like you to do me a favor before we proceed further into the service. Would you please help me? Um, if you are joining us for the first time on YouTube or Mixler, can you subscribe to that channel? I'll click the notification bell. And do me one more good. Uh, can you share this link on your status and social media platforms? And let people know that we are about to go further, even into the mind and the will of God for this time. All right, we started a journey together 2023 December. And I began to share as it concerns the mind of God, even as it concerns 2024. And one of the things I said is that if you are going to walk in the fullness of God's mind, then you have to live a life that is packed and powered by the supernatural. We had our anchor verse for that year, for this year, 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 2 to 3, verses 3 to 4. And we see that how we become partakers of the divine nature as we grow in the knowledge of his precious promises. All right, and that's what I want to share with us today, knowledge. I want to bring forth to you knowledge. Right, and, and I shared on how you, the purpose of supernatural power, spoken to us uh, about the supernatural, how you are partakers of the divine nature, and I've shown us again uh, 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 on the dimensions of the supernatural. Right, we started out speaking on dimensions of supernatural about two Sundays ago, and you will recall that I taught on um, how the presence of Christ is the first dimension you must understand. And I said um, in the midweek service last week uh, that the aspect of the supernatural is also the anointing. And I showed us how you can release the anointing to work and, uh, in your life and how to get results supernaturally via the anointing. On Sunday, I shared on the glory, the glory uh, dimension. And, and I showed us uh, that the glory of God is available for believers if they want to even walk in that glory. Today, I, I have a message from God that will bless you. Uh, I want to go further even into the mind of God today. Genesis chapter 1, let's read together verses 26 and 28. The Bible says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image. Look at that. According to our likeness. This is what God said. He said, Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. All right, so male and female created he them. Let's go to Mark 11. Mark 11 and then verse 23. Mark 11 and then verse 23. Are we, are we good? Let's, let's go there together. Mark 11 and then verse 23. It's quite a popular portion of scriptures. I'll read from verse 22. Um, to give a little bit of background even to this. Mark 11, and then we read 22 and 23. All right? The Bible says, Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God. For assuredly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believe that those things he says will be done. He will have whatever he says. Jesus says, whatever you say, you can have. There is a dimension of the supernatural that is unlocked if you have faith in God. Or like the literal Greek says, have the God kind of faith. Or have the, God, have the faith of God. Have the faith of God. If you can possess the faith of God, scripture says there is a dimension that will be unlocked to you. You will be able to say to this mountain. Now mountains don't normally move because people speak to it. But you speak to mountains and mountains will move, Jesus says, because you have faith in God. So it's not about what you say alone. It's about the power that backs up what you say. Today I want to share with you on what I've titled the faith dimension. Shall we pray? Father, thank you. Because the entrance of what we give light, give understanding to us as simple folks. We've come to learn at your feet. I make my tongue the pen of a ready writer. And I distill the word of life upon the spirit of your people. After now, make us better people. In Jesus' name, and amen. And amen. The faith dimension. Today, I want to bring to you what I call my concluding part in the series, The Dimension of the Supernatural. And it is expedient that I share with you the fuel that energizes anything supernatural. And that fuel is faith. 
uh, without faith, all of the other methods you may have learned will not work. Scriptures will not work for you without faith uh, in God. Faith in God is uh, the glue that just gums everything together. If you are going to see God operate in your life, if you are going to walk in the dimension that God expects you to walk, if you are going to be a partaker of the divine nature indeed, then you've got to understand the faith dimension. Faith unlocks both the anointing dimension and the glory dimension. Faith unlocks both the person of Jesus dimension and the faith dimension, the glory dimension. You understand that you have to have faith in the person of the Christ to call upon his name. The disciples, two of them went to the gate called Beautiful, saw a man, and they said, in the name of Jesus, rise and walk. They believed in that name. It took faith in that name. In fact, they themselves stood before the sign in 316 of the book of Acts, and they said, faith in this name has made this man whole that you see even today. Listen, dear friends, oh, that's 416. Listen, dear friends, it's quite important and necessary. We understand that faith is the access gate even to the supernatural. It's the door, it's the path of the entrance even to the supernatural. Faith unlocks the glory dimension. I spoke sincerely and, and extensively on how the glory uh, dimension is greater than the anointing dimension as it concerns the supernatural. But listen, dear friends, the glory will come when we believe in the God of the scriptures. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews chapter 11 that now he that comes to God must believe that he is. First, there must be a belief that God is. That means he is alive. He is here right now. He is the God of the now. He is present in our presentness. That's the first foundation of faith. That when we call upon him, he is going to come. God will come to the room because his word says he habits the praise of his people. So I believe God will come in. Why? Because I have faith that what I have said will come to pass. You've got to have faith uh, even in God's word. Today, I want to share with you an amazing truth. Uh, listen, I found out that many people don't doubt the power of God. They do not doubt the magnitude of God's power. If they are doubt at all, is that they doubt whether God will come true for them at a the time and in the season they expect him to come for them, to come true for them. Listen to this. Uh, faith unlocks the door. Faith unlocks the door. Faith causes supernatural act. Faith breaks down barriers and unlocks the dynamics of the supernatural. Faith is all that you need. Listen, you can learn other methods. You can read scriptures. But if the scripture has not become active and alive in you and with you, it's because faith has not increased or grown in you. When I received the call of God into ministry, the Holy Spirit impressed on me the importance of faith. He told me specifically that exploit in ministry is exploit by faith. You will not have exploit in your life except you first grow in your faith. The Lord told me this. So I began to study the concept and the subject of faith, especially from the pages of scriptures and from the experience and the writings of men who had worked with God and worked with him even in faith. So faith is intentional. You can grow in faith without being intentional about your faith. You can increase in faith without being intentional about increasing. Dear friends, only those who have faith in God work in exploit. Because of this impression, you've got to put in so much effort to grow in faith. Today, I want to share with you certain principles that have helped in my journey. Treasures I didn't find out only via studies, but by the revelation of the Christ. What I call the faith dimension. And we will begin our journey appropriately from the book that we started from the book of the beginnings. Genesis chapter 1 verses 26 to 28. Bible says, come let's make man in our own image and let him have dominion. So if you look at that concept and that subject intrinsically, you will find out the purpose of man. 
Man was made to have dominion. And scripture then begins to list the place where man is supposed to have dominion. Over animals, over the earth, uh, over all that the Lord has created. So you are made to have dominion, uh, not over other men, but to have dominion over all creations. Uh, all creatures. Uh, that's what the Lord has made you to have dominion over. Little wonder the assignment given to Adam in the garden was to guard the garden. He was to guard and tend the garden. Because God has put everything underneath him. God has made him Lord over it. Because to have dominion means to be Lord over. It means to reign. It means to rule. It means to subjugate. So God knows that for us to subjugate, there was something that was important and necessary in our creation. I want you to follow me very closely. God understood that he had to make man in a certain way if man is going to subjugate, if man is going to rule. And this was pre-fall man. This was the time, there was man before fall. And therefore, everything that man has or owns, you want to understand how man is made to function, you need to understand Genesis chapter 1. Very important. The book of the beginnings, very important. Bible says, let us make man in our image after our own likeness. God understood that for man to work appropriately, the secret is that man must be made in the likeness of God. Uh, what does that word likeness, what does it mean? It means to be the exact duplicate of another. It means let us make another of our kind. That was what God was saying. The literal Hebrew says another of our kind. So God made man another of his kind. And so God, God, man is another of God's own kind. Man is God's another kind. That is the essence of man. You are the exact duplicate of God. It doesn't therefore suggest uh, that when you see God, you are going to see a God who is probably Latino or dark, uh, or you are going to find a God who is Caucasian. No, what you find, the nature of man that is like God is the spirit of man. And how do I understand this? Because the Bible tells us, again, in the very book of the beginning, Genesis chapter 2 verse 7, God therefore now spoke uh, on forming of man. Bible says, and God formed man. So the part of man that God formed, uh, he is the physical nature of man. That's the one that God says, uh, God, man, man was formed from the dust. That's why we say man will return to dust. The man we speak of that returns to the dust uh, is the man that is formed of God. Little wonder when man, the Bible says man was going to die if man ate of the food of the garden. And scripture records that Adam and Eve lived almost 900 years after eating of the fruit of the garden. What happened is that their flesh did not die, but the Bible records that they were separated from God. Understand that? So a man died a spiritual death. A spiritual death. So the man, the kind of the, the kind of God that is the kind of man is spirit. Little one that Jesus was speaking in four in the fourth book of John. The Bible says, those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. It therefore means that God has a, man has a spirit and man has the ability to function from his spirit. Therefore, the true worship of God will be from the spirit. From the spirit, right? So the part of man that was created to have dominion, to live supernaturally, is that part of man that is the spirit. Therefore, for you to actually live a supernatural life, you must increase in your spirit man. The level of your command in your spirit, man, is the level of your command uh, as it concerns the supernatural. Listen, you may have gone to the gym, you may have, you may have six packs, uh, you may have grown tall, uh, you may have lost all the baby fat, you, you may have shed some weight, uh, and you will still have zero command in the spiritual because you have done nothing about your spirit, man. Therefore, I tell people, the more you grow in the things of the spirit, uh, the more you are able to function in the supernatural. In the supernatural. Interestingly, the first command of God in scriptures was that the first announcement of God, sorry, the first announcement of God in scriptures was that God created. He performed miraculous works. This is how spirit people are supposed to function. The first thing that we saw from God as a spirit being was that God created. That's the first thing we saw. Miraculous works. He said, let there be light. Where did light come from? Light came. Miraculous works. It gives us a clue as to how supernatural spiritual beings are supposed to function. They function by command. They function by creating. They function by miraculous acts. And this is not only what we saw in the life of God. We also saw it in the life of the Christ. 
the Son of God. One of the shared characteristics we have with God is that we also are spirit beings uh, made in the image and the likeness of God can walk in the supernatural. We can see signs and wonders. We can do things that the natural man cannot do. A Paul did it. The Bible says uh, Peter did it. That the shadows of Peter were healing the sick. We can also become the expression of God. If we will see the God pattern, the Jesus pattern, and compare you with the pattern of the first apostles, then we can begin to function in the supernatural. Because you see, the essence uh, that's what you need to function in supernatural. The raw material you need to function in the supernatural. It's not faith in God, no. It's not power, it's not the anointing. It's been alive in your spirit, man. That's the raw material you need. It's been alive in your spirit, man. The moment you are alive in your spirit, man, you are born again. Then you have the first raw material, the essential raw material to function in the supernatural. Because you have become a spirit man. Your spirit is awakened and alive unto God. You are not dead to God. You have access to the things of God. You understand what God is doing and you can walk the God, works of God after him. You can do the works of God even after him. You've got that nature of God inside of you. The spirit man is awakened. Therefore, I tell people that the best of us, the worst of us, is better than the best of the world. The worst of us. Why? Because the worst of us have got a spirit man alive. We are spirit beings. The worldly people, no, they are not. We, Our spirit is awakened to God. God has given you that first nature. It was the nature that Adam lost. It is the same nature that has been restored unto us. But how was it? How is it? That the apostles, how is it that the apostles could walk in the supernatural? They believed in Christ. They believed in the Son of God. They became uh, born again. They have the empowerment of the Holy Ghost. But that was not the divine secret. The Bible says they had faith. They had faith in the Christ. Faith unlocked that dimension of the supernatural. They did it by believing, by speaking and acting. Listen, there are no miracles except we speak or act. There are no miracles except we speak and act. There are no miracles except we speak and act. Therefore, the believer must understand that the supernatural responds to sound prophetic dynamics. Without sound dynamics, nothing happens. The believer must learn to speak. That is how the faith dimension is unlocked. And so very quickly today, I want to share with you what I learned from the life of the apostles. I want to share with you what I found out that the apostles knew. The secret of their lives. Because I know if we can find it, it's a gem. I want to unleash, I want to put into your hands certain gems. If you can find these six principles and act on these six principles, the glory will come. The anointing will begin to work in your life. The Holy Spirit will begin to move and the supernatural will be released again and again. Let me say this to you. God's idea is not that we live a natural life and once in a while operate in the supernatural. God's idea is that the believer should live a supernatural life so that you don't have to plug in and plug out and say, now I need power. And then you begin to pray. You begin to press in, press in. No. A fasted life, a pressed in life. That's why Jesus says men ought always to pray. A prayed up life. Not a life that wants to pray up, but a prayed up life. Essentials to operate in the supernatural. Let me begin to unlock supernatural faith dimension to you. Let me give you gems that will help you in your journey. Let me put into your hand the things I found in scriptures and I've walked in and I've seen results. Number one, supernatural faith works with words. How do I unleash the faith dimension? By your words. Listen, dear friends, don't be fooled. You don't have faith if you are not speaking. Faith must speak. Faith must speak. Supernatural faith must speak. The creative force of faith is shown and revealed in words. God said, light 
be. He didn't think it. God can take it, but he didn't think it. Scripture says, he said, if you are going to function as spirit beings, you've got to speak. I told us and we followed that journey to find out what nature of God we shared and we find out. We found out that the nature of God that we share is that we are spirit beings. And God is the first spirit being introduced in scriptures. The first one in the book of Genesis. The first spirit being introduced in scriptures was God. And how did God function? Supernaturally. How did he make things? And how did miracles happen? How was the art formed? He spoke. Listen, dear friends, by faith we understand that the words were framed by the words of God. Where was light before God called it forth? In God's mind. But until God called it forth, it didn't come forth. Listen, you may have ideas in your mind. You may have things in your head. You may have things, a vision that God has given to you. You may have a dream, but it will remain there except you function the way God functions. Except you call it forth. Except you speak. Listen, dear friend, spirit being speaks. Spirit being speaks. I remember this story. A woman who came from a lineage of deformed earth. A lineage of people who had deformity in their heart. This woman, the doctor said to her, said it's very likely you are going to have a deformed heart. Especially with the way your breathing is, with the challenges you are having. I suspect that this thing in your lineage, uh, your genes, is going to affect you. Medical science have told us that historically, uh, when they have done research, they found out that there is a link, uh, especially when it comes to the arts, that people can have deformities that are inherited. And they can have problems with their heart that are inherited. And they told this woman, and this woman said, no, I don't believe that. I am a partaker of the divine nature. Whoever is new in Christ, I'm a new creature. All things are past. This is not my portion. I'm not going to have a deformed heart. I'm not going to have it. My heart functions well. The Bible says he has created in me a new heart. A clean heart. And she began to say that. For years, I had begun to function well. <laughs> Listen, dear friends. She lived well into her 80s, into her 90s. She did not die of heart deformity. She died of old age. <laughs> she died in her old age. They said she couldn't live long. But by her works, she introduced an higher law that is greater than the law of nature. She brought in the supernatural by her words. I don't know what the report has been. They might have told you you might have to stand 10 years on a particular spot before you go forward. I've come to announce to you. You can change the verdict. You can change the verdict. You can change the verdict. The verdict over your life. The verdict over your family. You can change the verdict by what you speak. So things have not been working well. Things have not been going well. You are behind in your bills. You are behind schedule according to your plan. You can gain divine isolation by your words. You've got to learn to speak. And that's what we read in the word of the Christ. Mark chapter 11 verse 23. He said, whosoever shall say unto this mountain. <laughs> oh, beautiful. You've got to say. If you do not say, it will not move. If you do not say, it will not come to pass. Uh, whosoever. The Bible did not say pastors. The Bible did not say bishops. Quit looking for pastors to speak into your life. Uh, you are the greatest prophet over your own life. Uh, if you can speak. Uh, scripture says, whosoever shall say. Come on. Declare you are fruitful. Declare you are not barren. Declare things are falling in line to you in pleasant praises. Faith speaks. There is a voice to faith. There is a voice to faith. If you are not saying anything, then you cannot have anything. For it is what you say that guarantees what you have. Your voice, your words are the resources that everyone needs to build with. Angels are domiciled around you, yes. But angels can be there and they can be in an inert stage. They can be in a state of inertia. The only way you can make them begin to walk is by speaking. Because angels do the words of God. Therefore, when I quote scriptures and I speak the word of the Lord over my life, I am releasing angels to begin to walk in my life. That is how to unleash the supernatural dimension of God. That's why we come to a crusade ground and say there shall be healings. There shall be signs and wonders. 
Because we understand that life and death are in the power of tongues. 1821, the book of Proverbs. Life is in the tongue. Power. Death is in the tongue. There was not death that Jesus released. He looked at the fig tree. He thought of it. He was disappointed. If he had only thought and walked away, the fig tree would have lived. But scripture says Jesus spoke to that fig tree. He spoke to that fig tree. He said, no one eat of you anymore. Death was released and the fig tree began to die. You can release death into poverty. You can release death into NHA. Supernatural faith works with words. Somebody say, okay, that's the first gem. Sweetheart, that's the first gem. I want you to hold it fast in your life. I want you to change what you say. I want you, somebody say, I'm a quiet person. No, you can't be quiet when it comes to spiritual things. You can't. You might be quiet with people, but you must have a time where you boldly declare, where you boldly confess, where you speak God's word after him. That's what homologio says. You must get to a time in your life where you declare it and call it because it calls the things that be not as though they were. And we know they became. Spirit beings call things and they become so. Yes, spirit being. Say, I'm anointed. I walk in the faith of God. I'm anointed. I accelerate. I gain speed. I march up with wings as eagles. And I saw I'm not limited. I'm not defeated. God is with me. God is for me. I'm never stranded in life. In the name of Jesus. Declare it. Second gem, very quickly. Spirit, supernatural faith is fully persuaded in the house. God had no doubt in the fulfillment of his words. He had no doubt. He had no doubt. Look at that secret. The Bible says God said, Genesis 1, light be. And light became. He had no doubt in his heart. How can I prove that God had no doubt? Because Jesus said it in the principle he shared with us in 11, 23. Whosoever shall say to this mountain, moved and shall not doubt in his heart. Doubt in his heart. Sometimes the devil will speak to you in your head. He says, you think that that confession does it? In as much as it is in the head, faith casting function in the heart. You can have doubt in the head, but faith in the heart will still get the results. In as much as I have not processed it, in as much as I have not accepted what the devil has put in my head as true, then I can still walk in faith. Fully persuaded. If Jesus will appear right now in your room and you see him physically or you have a vision of the Christ and Jesus says to you, whatever you say right now, I'm going to do it. I know what you're going to do, sweetheart. You're going to start speaking fast, loud and clear. Why? Because he's in the room. He's in the room. He's in the room. But dear friends, we are not Thomas. We are not the generation of Thomas. We are the generation of him who believe, even though we haven't seen him. Thomas said, you know what? He said, I put my hands into that nail, shred hands, I wouldn't believe. But that's not who we are. We are a generation that says, you know what? God says it. I believe it. That settles it. I don't need a physical manifestation of the Christ to be persuaded at the truth of scriptures. I know it is so. I'm going to say it that it says I should. The Bible tells us that Abraham believed God, Romans chapter 4, verse 3, and he was accounted unto him for righteousness. If you would believe God, fully persuaded, that he would give you that house, that he will give you that job, that he will give you that promotion, that he will perfect that which concerns you, that he will heal you, that you will lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. That you will call the things that be not and they will become so. That you will cast out devils. God will account it to you. He puts it onto, your, onto that side of your accounting book as righteousness. The Bible says he, was, he didn't stagger, but he was fully persuaded. 4, 20 to 21, book of Romans. Be fully persuaded. He who has promised is also faithful. He will also do it. What God has said, God is able to come, make it come to pass. He doesn't need my help. He's able to make it come to pass. I know for certain. If my father, earthly father, promised a thing, and I will believe him, how much more? Who can, tomorrow, he, 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 he can have the desire and the willingness, but he doesn't have the means. How about God? Means is not a problem with God. Means is not an issue with God. I'm going to trust him because he says it. Blessed are they who have believed. 
even though they haven't seen. You know the way we got saved is that we believe and we confess. I tell you that's the same way you will get many things in this kingdom. You've got to believe and then you confess. The same way you receive salvation is the same way you are going to receive your healing. Glory be to God. Remember, I, that reminds me of the story of Fred Casey Price, a man who was called the Apostle of Faith. Apostle of Faith, Fred Casey Price. He had a lump developed in his abdomen. And they were so painful when he was preaching, stand before God's people, and the pain would not come because of the anointing. But afterwards, the pain will come again and again. And he went for a surgical operation, and, and I mean, they removed this. But they told him, they said, we've done this for many people. And what we have seen is that this lump grows back. Even though it's cut, we find that it grows back. And I guess price is not, not an issue. I mean, he just left the place. Had the information, left the place. After two years, the pain came back. The lump came back. And Casey Price knew. He knew this is not medical anymore. I've got to fight this by faith. He believed God and he kept confessing it. He believed God and he kept confessing. I'm healed. Fully persuaded that if God can heal cancer, he can take away a lump. Fully persuaded if God can build a church, the Lord can heal a lump. And he began to confess. Sometimes he says he'll wake up in the morning with pain in his abdomen. So painful, he kept confessing God's word. The days that there was pain, he confessed the word. The day there was no pain, he kept confessing the word. What keeps you in consistent and persistent confession is that you believe in it. If you don't believe in it, you will confess for a day. You confess for a while and then you stop. But in the end, there is full persuasion, full conviction. You keep confessing. And the day came, he found out. He said he didn't even know how and when he left. But the day came, he touched that place. Couldn't find it anymore. Why? Because faith will always deliver. If you are fully persuaded, dear friends, and you speak and you act and you confess, you discover a day would come, you begin to work in the reality of your confession. In the reality of your confession. Supernatural faith does not doubt in the heart. Number three, supernatural faith, this supernatural dimension of faith is not preoccupied with our I remember many times I pray for people and I look at their legs and fat, I, I begin to say, how will this happen? How can this be cured? How? This is so damaged. How can this life be repaired? This is so damaged. How? And I found out that when we ask how, we open the door to logic and we open the door to fear. We open the door to doubt. Anytime you concentrate on how, how will the Lord supply? How will this church be built? How will these fees be paid? How will I receive my healing? When the devil can keep us in the arena of how, he can keep us in doubt. He can keep us in doubt. The only answer to how is the Holy Spirit. Is the Holy Spirit. That's the response the angel gave Mary. And that's the answer. Is sufficient for all times and for all men and for all of eternity. How? The Holy Spirit. Listen to this. If you are going to walk in supernatural faith dimension, it's your only concern must be speaking right and believing right. Speaking right and believing right. God speaks the things he wants to see. Genesis 1, 3, 1, 6, 1, 9, 1, 11, 1, 14. God said, what's your business as a spirit being? Is to speak. Is to speak. God wasn't interested in darkness. He wasn't interested in the magnitude of the waters. He spoke to the waters, be divided and let land come forth. And that was what happened. He wasn't concerned about the difficulties. That's not your business. The supernatural will come. Oh, God say, lay hands on that sick guy. Say, how will the healing happen? That's not your business, sweetheart. That's not your business. Lay hands. That's what the scripture says. Lay hands and they shall recover. The recovery part is the God part. Why are you concerned about the God part? Do your own part and stop worrying about God being God. Sometimes we over, we hinder God by our overthinking. Be satisfied with what? Let God deal with the how. Let God be God. Many years ago, I remember I was driving and the Lord said, it is time for another car. I had him very clearly. I, he, he, I, and I began to think, <laughs> how is this going to happen? How is this going to happen? 
How is this going to happen? I had the Lord say, it's time for another car. I began to look at how much was in my account. How many people do I know that have many, many cars? How many people have I blessed? How is the car going to come? Is it going to be sent from abroad? And I remember many weeks later, the Lord said to me, He said, do you discover that before I spoke to you about the car, you are not worried about it. But now that I have spoken to you about it, you are thinking about it, worried sick about it. He said, and that's why it's not going to work except you stop and begin to rest in my word. Faith is resting on the word of God. You've got to rest on God's word. Faith is resting on God's word. Faith is less concerned with the processes of how things are going to manifest. Faith's only business is believing and speaking the expected end. That's your only business. God has revealed to you at hand. God says, I'm going to give you another car. Keep speaking. How is it going to happen? That's God's business. Let God be God. You be concerned about what? And you keep speaking and confessing. That's how the devil gets us into our arena of doubt. That's how he takes us to fear. When we start being God, start playing God. The idea of heaven is man be man and God be God. The idea of scriptures is for you to face what is your path. Number four, supernatural faith speaks to things and not about things. If you want to walk in the, in the faith dimension, you must quit speaking about the things you want to change. I, I begin to speak about how great they look. Ah! This country is tough, oh! I remember yesterday I was having a conversation with my brother. I began to say, you know, Euro used to be 1,000 to 1,002. Just a month ago, now I'm hearing it's about 1,003. And all of that. I said, so let's talk about something else. You know, I, 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 I don't want to talk about things I can't change. I don't want to talk about things I have no, no impact about. Whatever I do, whatever... I, I can't change it. I, I'm not in government. I, I'm not the one forming the policies. I, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not in charge. I know many Nigerians just worry sick about things. It's not that we are in concern about the direction of this country. We are really concerned. But I'm not going to let that affect me. I'm not going to speak. I'm going to put myself into negativity because of what the people are doing. I don't care how crazy they look or they are. I'm going to face God. I'm going to do the things I can change. The major difference between us and God is that God speaks to things, we speak about things. God speaks to things, we speak about our challenges. God speaks to mountains, we speak about mountains. Israel stood before Goliath, and what the people? For many days, they were, spoke, they were speaking about Goliath. Oh, it's a great man. Oh, he's a man of war. And he will come out every day and gallivant, and every day they keep looking at him. They kept looking at the guy. And they kept looking at the guy. And the more they look at him, the more fear came to them. And the Bible says when he comes out, they trepidate. They were afraid. Until a man, David, came and started speaking to Goliath. You've got to speak to your Goliath. Don't speak about him. You've seen the challenge. You've seen the economic situation. You don't need to be an expertise to know that something is not wrong, with, something is not right in this economy. But that's not what changes your life. Can you begin to speak? about your own personal life. I remember I, I, as I was talking to somebody and I said, listen, dear friend, menstrual pain is the cause of the law because it's part of your reproduction system. If you do not have menstruation, it means you are producing hex. So it's linked to your reproduction. And God says to woman, he cursed woman and said, woman, yeah, fear pain you will bring forth. And so that pain, you can speak to it. You can believe it. And I'm not speaking theory. I've, I've shared it with many people who had crazy pain. My lady, who, she doesn't go to school because of this pain. And I tell guys, don't speak less of menstrual pain if you haven't gone through it. It's, 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 a, it's, it's awesome. <laughs> That's the best way to put it. it. It can be very bad and terrible. And this lady will not go to school. She missed classes. Remember there was an exam, a test she missed because of, because of, of, because of the pain. She won't be able to walk. And I began to share with her through the pages of scriptures. You are redeemed from the cause of the law. Let's appropriate this under the cause of the law, according to scriptures. You can't give birth. You can't have these things without it affecting your daily needs. 
Eureka! She found it, discovered it, she saw it herself, began to proclaim it. Last time I found out, she's still living, menstrual pain, menstrual period. She doesn't care anymore. She's fine. She's good because she believed God for it. And I was speaking to this other lady and she began to tell me, you say, you don't understand. You see, the reason why there's pain is because it is caused by the edemotron walls which are shedding, you know, the edemotron is like a mucus membrane. And she begins to tell me all these things, science, and I'm like, whoo, speak to it. That's what I'm saying. Believe God. He can take it away. And in case you are hearing me today, I am wondering, can this be true? I've had testimonies on testimonies of ladies whose menstrual period now is pain-free. Believe it that it can happen. And confess it. I'm not speaking to those who are not believers. I'm not saying that people won't drag you for things like this. But I'm speaking on a reality. The Bible says it's only the spiritual man that understands the things of the spirit. Your spirit being locking on this. God didn't speak about the chaos of the world. He acted and spoke about it. That's how supernatural faith operates. We know Jesus said we can have what we say. We are saying what we have. That's the problem. Jesus said, you can have what you say. We are saying what we already have. And that's the issue. You got to change. Number five, supernatural faith is the spiritual force behind God's actions. He will never do a thing without saying it first. You know everything God does? God says it first. Even redemption. God gave the message many years before the Christ would come. Isaiah prophesied about it. Moses spoke about it. David spoke about it. God does not do anything without speaking about it first. Why? Because he understands that by speaking about it, there is a spiritual force that is being released. You see, all that your vision, your plan, begin to speak about it. Begin to speak about it. Begin to speak about it. Power is released when we say it. 34, 16 of the book of Isaiah. Bible says the mouth of the Lord has spoken a thing. The spirit will gather it together. Gather it together. As you speak, the Holy Spirit will begin to move upon your words. Gathering it. That's, that's the resources needed to build that word. Resources needed to build that word. For by faith we understand that successive aims, oh, social systems were framed by the word of God. As you begin to release your words, framings are going on. Our words are framing for our future. What you say now is framing your tomorrow. Can you begin to frame your today right now? Frame your tomorrow right now. I hear me to digest not how to frame. Things are not getting better. It's not how to frame. You speak, not speak the things you see. I understand that fact is it getting better for you. <laughs> but declare what you want. I'm sure what you want is not failure. Can you declare success? Can you declare prosperity? God told me many years ago, every word carries his birth. They will have what they say. Listen, dear friends, will you speak the words of life? Which words are you speaking? To see the creative force, even of the supernatural, you need to speak words. Little wonder you see evangelists, uh, they record a short one-minute video, and they will say something like this, uh, come to that crusade, come to encounter Jesus. Uh, they shall have the signs and wonders. Uh, healings will take place. Uh, miracles will take place. Uh, salvation of souls. Uh, the lame will walk uh, and God will be in the room. Come. You see, when they say that, and the more they say that, the more spiritual forces are released to begin to act and make the atmosphere conducive for what they are saying. What they are doing is actually framing it. Framings, framings, framings. You've got to learn how to frame your life. You've got to learn how to frame your life. Good thinking will not solve your problem. Good thinking with good speaking. Good believing with good speaking. With good speaking. You've got to speak the right words. Every time. Every time. Framing your word. Framing the future. Framing what you want to see. I'm anointed of the Lord. I'm called to empower a people to live for Jesus. I'm called to teach purpose to his people. I'm called. You've got to keep saying that. Liberation follows after my ministry. Deliverance follows after my ministry. We are making millionaires. We are making people prosperous according to the ways of the Christ. Speak. Speak. Finally, ladies and gentlemen, supernatural faith is backed up. It's backed up by the spiritual law of seed time and harvest. It's a spiritual law. What you sow is what you shall reap. As far as art remains, seed time 
and harvest. Summer and winter, cold and heat. We not see. We not see. Can I ask you, does the earth still remain? Does it still remain? If the answer is yes, then what are you sowing? I know speaking to a lady many years ago, and you know, you know, he said, she said, she said, it's that time of the year. I always fall sick this time of the year. <laughs> I'm like, you are expecting to be sick. You are, oh, oh, she said, no, no. That's what happens every time of the year. I said, yeah, because it happens every time of the year. Now you are expectant. You are waiting for it. I said, kind of. <laughs> I said, that's why you're sick. You're already saying it. You're already framing it. You're already making it happen. How do you change something like that? How do you change an evil pattern? By speaking. Oh, is the devil at work in the world? Yes. But is the devil supposed to be at work in the life of the believer? No. But how do the believer stop the devil in his life? By his words. By his words. By his words. True to that lady's work, what weeks later she was sick. Why? She was created. She entered the supernatural by her words. <laughs> she was sowing seeds that were, that were going to germinate. Someone said, but you know, we live in the time of grace. We live in a time that does not matter anymore. Seriously? Uh, sit time, uh, the sit time, doesn't matter. Are you kidding me right now? Do you read English? Genesis 8.22 says, as far as art remains. The question is, does the art remain? If it does, then those who seed, those who sow seed must await their harvest. Is the scripture away? Galatians chapter 6, verse 7. If you are looking for a New Testament proof, say God is not mock. Whatever a man sows. That it will also reap. So, what seeds should you rather sow if you will reap? Can you begin to sow good seeds? Remember, faith is a seed. And as we close today, I'm going to enter the supernatural dimension. I want you to unleash your heart to more. Unleash your heart to more. Remember that vision of God. You are going to raise the dead. Remember that vision of God. You are going to be employers of labor. <laughs> you, you remember that vision of God. You are building a blue chip company. Remember that vision of God. You are creative. Remember that vision of God. I want you boldly to be speaking it right now. Just begin to speak it. Somebody say it's far. It doesn't matter. Sow the seed right now. Sow the seed right now. I join my faith with yours. And I only say yes and amen to your confession. So begin to confess. Begin to declare. I am rich. I am above, never beneath. I'm never stranded. Oil of God flows in my head. I operate in the supernatural. I operate in glory. I operate in the glory dimension. God is in me. God is working through me. God is for me. In the name of Jesus. Can somebody declare? And I say yes. I say yes and amen. Yes. I say yes. Yes and amen. I say yes. Keep speaking. Don't stop confessing. Lights be. Somebody need to declare direction be. Somebody need to declare wisdom be. Grace be. Glory be in my life. Joy be. Favor be right now. Right here. Right now. Declare it. Declare it on this mountain. Declare it. And I say yes and amen. I say yes and amen. You can be a particle of the divine nature via his exceedingly great and precious promises. Oh, but you first of all need to personalize that promise. That's the dimension of it. Personalize that promise and say, it's mine. It's mine. I'm lifted. It's mine. Glory is mine. Joy is mine. Favor is mine. Money comes to me from the nations of the heart. Dollars comes to me. Pounds comes to me. I get a foreign job in Nigeria. It's my portion in the name of Jesus. I'm skillful in the name of declare it. Come on now. Come on now. Don't stop declaring it. Don't stop declaring it. He says, surely have you have spoken in my ears. He says, so will I do. Somebody say, when is God listening? Everything. Everything. Angels are here. God is everywhere. He's going to call me the presence. He's everywhere. When is he listening now? Israel did not call God to a conference. They didn't. In fact, God was not involved in that conversation. They were only complaining to his servant. Complaining amongst themselves. He said, surely have you spoken. He said, so will I do. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to speak God's word. 
It's time to speak the right words over your life. It's time to declare and decree. Because we understand that we know, as he has said it, it's going to happen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes and amen. Yes and amen. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name and amen. I just feel I should, somebody right now is listening to this. Uh, you've got a pain in your body. I sense it. You've got a pain in your body. You might be listening to this sermon even after now. You've got a pain somewhere in your body. I want you to rise by faith. And I declare in the name of Jesus, I would bound that pain. That spirit of infirmity, that pain, that pattern that wants to lock itself to you. You are a new creature. All things are past. I put an end to it in the name of Jesus. Yeah. You can jump now. You can run now. You can walk. Check it. It's God. It's God. It's God. It's God. Somebody have been turned down. God said you can go again. You can go again. You can go again. Somebody here has been disappointed. God said it's time to go again. You can go again. You can go again. You can go again. I see someone in tears. You, you've cried over the night. God says to tell you I had you from the first time. But it is your words that has nailed you down to your present spot. Listen, God said it is your words that have nailed you down to your present spot. God says, I can't do nothing for you except you change your words. Except you change your words. I believe you will change your word. I believe you will change your word. He cares for you. He sees you now. He sees you now. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Somebody, every time you enter into this, such an atmosphere, there's a shaking in your hand, there's a stingly sensation in your hand. God said to tell you, have I not anointed you? Have I not called you? Say, go. Go. And act out your faith. Say, go. And act out your faith. Lay hands on the sick. Lay hands. Enter into the realm of creating miracles. To signs and wonders. To healings and more. Thank you, Father. Lord, we exalt you. In Jesus' name. And amen. And amen. And amen. Thank you, Father, for what you've done amongst us today. We're grateful. Hallelujah. And that's fed up today. I'm sure you've been blessed. I'm sure you have a word to run with. Change your words. Change your life. Speak boldly. Confess. A short mouth is a short destiny. The more you speak, the more you give angels and heaven the resource to build and to frame your life with. It's time to speak the right words. Because when you speak the right words, you will live right. And when you live right, men will look at you and you become a sign show, even of every hand. God wants to make you an example in the world. But even he is limited because of your negative words. Begin to speak right. Faith dimension is the bond that joins everything even together. I see you walking the supernatural. I see you triumphant. I see you walking the fullness of God's mind and God's plan, even in the name of Jesus.